Panda. Panda. Panda, Panda, Panda. Panda. I got broads in Atlanta. She's a Dolly in the family. Credit cards in the scammers. Welcome back to my elite army. It's been a while since I posted anything, but you know, just a lot been going on. Um, but we're back with another Spooky Monday, and we're gonna be reacting to three true disturbing quarantine stories. Well, already doesn't sound good. Quarantine stories. Let's get into it. Have you been hurt in a car accident? When you need a lawyer, you have a lawyer. Call us at Science and Kirk or go to you have a commercials. Story one. Twenty four years old, still living with my mom and dad, along with my two younger siblings. My parents bought a new house in March. Just around the time coronavirus really started to be taken seriously around the quarantining started. So we were in the unpacking and settling in phase during all of this. My room is actually in the basement, which I don't mind. It's furthest away from my parents' room. It's technically just an extra room in the house, not really meant to be a bedroom, but we made it one. Plus, my parents figure I'm going to be moving out soon, so why give me one of the better rooms in the house? The basement in this house is huge. It's really cool. I get to feel like it's kind of my own basement in a way because of my room. Right off the bat moving here, weird things would happen. Inside my room, mostly at night, I'd hear strange sounds inside the walls. I knocked on the wall and it seemed to be hollow. There's a vent in the room. I thought maybe there was an animal in the vents. I used my iPhone flashlight to get a look inside, but I couldn't really see anything. Whatever, Whatever, house noises, house I figured. Noise, if it persisted, if it persisted I would tell my dad to look into it. I set up my set Xbox up my on the Xbox basement TV. TV. In fact, I usually just chill in the basement the instead of my room. Of my room. I used the 50-inch TV, TV my dad set up down there. One night on the One first week in the house, house, I was playing Warzone on my Xbox, and I heard this oh, distinct Warzone. sound come from the side of the basement where my room was. It was muffled by a wall, which led me to believe it came from my room. Oh, shit. I, I took quickly jump inside my room, and it was empty. I hurried back to my game so that I wouldn't die, but to best describe the noise I heard, it sounded like a heavy glass object being placed on a table or something. I figured it probably came from upstairs. Literally the next night, I woke to some weird muffled thumps. I couldn't tell if it was above my room or to the side of my room. I took my phone again and went to the air vents, but once again, even with the light, I couldn't see anything in there. I was starting to worry a small animal might be in the vents or living inside the walls. I brought it to my dad's attention and told me to let him know if it persisted, and he told me to try to record the sounds if possible. So a few nights later, I woke up at four in the morning feeling extremely thirsty. My trusty bedside water bottle was empty that night. So I had to go upstairs to get a refill. On my way back downstairs from the kitchen after refilling the bottle, I stopped mid-staircase in the dark, thinking I heard something from the basement. Andy? I said very quietly, wondering if my brother was hiding down there. I whipped out my phone to use the flashlight again, and I finished my descent down the stairs. I had a quick look around the basement just for peace of mind. When I found it was clear, I went back to my room to hit the hay. As I placed my water bottle on a ledge above my bed, something in my gut told me to just look at that little vent in the wall one more time. So I shined the light in that direction, and even though it was only for like half a second, I knew what I saw. There was someone looking through the holes in the vent for just a brief moment. I saw their eyes clear as day, but they moved away just as the light revealed them. What did I do? I do. Probably hope probably I ran to the vent to get a look inside and see who was in there. But no. Instead, I screamed like a girl as I ran all the way back upstairs, yelling for my dad like a child. My whole family came down the stairs to my room. I brought them to the vent in my room and shined the light in it again. 
and dad took a look. Of course, there was no one in sight now. I'm not even lying when I say my mom and dad told me the cliche I was seeing things because I hadn't gotten enough sleep and I was tired. I didn't buy it. I wasn't sleeping there that night. I slept in the living room and locked the basement door that night. The basement door only has a lock on it because we have an outdoor entrance to the basement, so it serves as an extra small layer of security for break-ins, I guess. Well, the next day, I went down to the basement and I made a shocking discovery. There was some kind of secret door in the wall that was left open. I immediately called my dad down and we went inside of it together. There was a blanket on the floor of this little hidden room, along with a small wooden stool-like thing. And if you walk down this ever-so-tiny corridor, you'd come to the vent that peers into my room. This discovery would otherwise be cool if it didn't lead to the realization that someone has been living in this room, possibly raiding our kitchen, and possibly watching me in my room as I slept. I think when the person living in the room heard the commotion I made the night before, they figured it was time to bail. I still, still fear that they may come back. Come back. Nah, bro, man, that's enough to pack up and move. Well, fuck packing up. I'm just moving. It's April 2020, April 2020 as, I as I write this. Stuck in quarantine. Stuck in quarantine. I live in a duplex, duplex house. house. It's one story, one but story. it's divided it's into divided two sections. Into sections. Each side has, each two, side bedrooms has two bedrooms and a kitchen, and kitchen. with each having each its own having front its door. Own front door. Inside the house, there's a door separating the two sections, and it's locked by the other side. The landlord, Jose, lives on the other side, and he has the lock switch on his side of the door. Obviously, that's not exactly a situation I've been entirely comfortable with, so I took it upon myself to install some camera I bought on Amazon. It connects to my phone to alert me when motion is detected, and I aimed it right at that door. But did I ever expect to actually get any kind of notification from that app? No. That's why when I got a notification about movement on the camera, I freaked out. I opened the app and saw in the very laggy, low frame rate video that the door connecting the two sides of the house was open. I was literally sitting in my car in a parking lot, heart racing, waiting. A few minutes later, I saw Jose walking through the doorway, and a few seconds later, shutting the door behind him. I was supposed to go shopping, but instead I raced home to check my apartment. As far as I could tell, nothing was touched. I didn't know whether to confront him or see if it persisted, but the curiosity just ate away at me that night. I knocked on his front door and told him about my camera and that I knew he entered my apartment. He admitted it right away, but he had a reason. He said he smelt a burning smell that he thought was coming from my side of the house, and he knew I wasn't home, so he had to check if I left the oven on. Given that I couldn't find anything stolen, I had to just say, okay, thanks. I mean, realistically, it was a viable reason for him to come in, right? Still, that night while I was in bed, I wasn't happy about him just coming into my side of the house. I mean, that's against the law, isn't it? Given that we're both always home now makes the situation a little more tense. A few days later, I was up really, really late on a Zoom call with my friends. I got that dreaded notification on my phone that there was movement. I closed my laptop for like a second to go outside my room. All of my lights were off out there, obviously. It was like 3 a.m. I was in the living room, and I saw Jose standing in the corner. He had something in his hand that I couldn't see, but he was surely looking at me. I could only see him because the light from my bedroom came out to the living room slightly. He started walking to me like a zombie. My man's with a guy. I told him to chill out and as I backed away into my room. When I saw him still approaching me with this lifeless posture, I slammed the door shut and locked it. He started to pound on the door with some blunt object and tried the doorknob. I yelled at him to stop before I called the police. And just like that, he stopped. And a few seconds later, I heard the door separating the apartment slam shut. I peeped into the outside. He appeared to be gone. I got the police on the phone and had them come to the house. We got Jose to come to my side of the house. He claimed he didn't remember a thing. And as the four of us watched the footage on my phone of him entering my side of the apartment, he had this look of fear and remorse. That's when he claimed he has a sleepwalking problem that's gotten worse recently. And he's on a bunch of medications. The police asked me if I wanted to press charges. I looked at Jose and said no. 
However, however, as soon as the police left, left, I barricaded barricaded that door with my dresser dresser and started started looking for new apartments. apartments. I haven't seen Jose since, since, and I'm not staying here much longer. longer. I don't think I believe his sleepwalking story. story. It truly truly seemed he was trying to hurt me that night. night. You think, my dudes? But, uh, I'm gonna leave the rest of that video in the description below. Uh, that'll be all for now. (laughs) Um, I do have a gaming channel. You can check that out, too. It'll also be in the link below. Uh, stay safe. I hope everyone is safe because, you know, rioting and everything. Protesting. It's crazy. It's crazy out there. I am out of the army. Stay safe, Bruce. Thank <laughs> you.